Live. News 8 at 5 starts now. Connecticut and the nation trying to cope with two massacres just 13 hours apart. Go, 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 come on! In El Paso, Texas, the death toll rising after a gunman stormed a Walmart with an assault style rifle. The act being called domestic terrorism. In Ohio, chaos in downtown Dayton. A shooter opens fire outside a bar. The crowd seen frantically running for their lives. President Trump at the White House today condemning the shootings. Hate has no place in America. As the demand for action grows in Washington and here at home. That's why we have to stand up. That's why we need the federal government to stand up. We can take the lead in Connecticut, but we can't do it alone. We will bring you the very latest out of El Paso and Dayton in less than five minutes. But first, we begin with local breaking news. One arrest made in the case of a dog set on fire at a West Haven beach. Police are still searching for a second suspect. Let's get right to News 8's Mario Boone with the latest on this story. Mario. Well, and it's taken more than a month, but West Haven police detectives here behind me say they have finally made an arrest in this case of a dog set on fire over the 4th of July weekend. Uh, of course, now we're learning that uh, police are telling us the dog was not burned alive as initially reported. Let's get you to some of the video from back when this first happened and we brought you this story over the 4th of July. Uh, we are told the dog's owner, Latrice Moody, taken into custody today. She is charged with animal cruelty, breach of peace, illegal dumping, and open burning. Now, a second person, Maurice Jackson, a parolee, still being sought by officers. We are told, again, the dog was not burned to death. Investigators now say the dog was dead before being set on fire. Now the remains were found in the parking lot of Sandy Point Beach back uh, just after the 4th of July and uh, in a lengthy Facebook post, Moody wrote that her beloved terrier of 10 years named Brooklyn had been sick. She described the pet as her one and only child. Now, again, cops telling us they are still searching for Jackson tonight, and we do have a picture of him on our website, WTNH.com. They are asking anyone who might know where he is to give them a call. We are also working to learn who collected the reward in this case. Remember, the reward topped well over $13,000. Well, we are putting together for you at 6 where that money will go. We'll have that for you again next at 6. Reporting live outside the West Haven Police Headquarters, I'm Mario Boone, News 8. Two mass shootings in this country in El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio. The death toll is rising after this weekend of tragedy. But the question tonight, will this time be different? At least 31 people were killed between the two attacks in Texas and Ohio. Two more victims in El Paso died at the hospital today. About 50 people are injured between the two shootings. The two horrific scenes happening within 13 hours of each other. ABC's Romina Puga has the latest. Today, two cities in mourning and communities craving change. At an overnight vigil in Dayton, mourners demanding action from the state's government. In El Paso, even medical professionals visibly moved as they report that two of the injured victims passed away. Unfortunately, these wounds have been devastating and major. 78-year-old Juan Velasquez is one of the recently deceased. His son telling ABC News he's devastated, and like many in the Hispanic community, he's scared for his life. We're afraid to go out to the street because we feel like we're being hunted. I mean, because of our, our color, our skin color. It all started Saturday morning when 21-year-old Patrick Crucius opened fire in a packed Walmart, killing at least 22 and injuring dozens. Authorities suspect that El Paso's ethnic makeup and proximity to the Mexican border may have played a role in the shooter's choice of location. He's now charged with capital murder, but federal authorities say more charges could be coming, including domestic terrorism. The shooter in Dayton began his killing spree early Sunday morning. 24-year-old Connor Betts opened fire in the downtown district, killing nine people, including his sister, and injuring more than 30. Officials still searching for a motive. We have a lot of evidence still to go through. The president addressing the nation today, condemning white nationalism. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, 
bigotry and white supremacy. Hate has no place in America. The FBI is concerned with copycat extremists and is asking the public to report any suspicious activity, whether online or in person. In El Paso, Romina Puga, ABC News. Mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger, not the gun. In his televised address to the nation, President Donald Trump called for stronger background checks for gun purchasers. The president is blaming mental illness and violent video games for the rise in mass shootings. He also said anyone who commits mass murder should get the death penalty. Here in Connecticut, outrage at the state capitol. A resonating message today. Lead or get out of the way. We are here to talk, but we've run out of words. Three mass shootings in less than a week. El Paso, Dayton, Gilroy. Senator Richard Blumenthal and Governor Lamont, along with other leaders on the steps of the state capitol today. We have more guns, or almost as many guns in this country as we have people. Calling out the epidemic of gun violence in every city and every town across the country. It isn't only the mass shooting. It is every day, everywhere, around America. Leaders directing their anger towards those lawmakers who stand on the sidelines. In a democracy, we vote. There is no excuse. And those who seem to add fuel to the fire. We have leaders in our state and our country who empower hate, who vilify people from Mexico, Central and South America, the Middle East, and other places. Congress is now in a five-week recess. Blumenthal and other top Democrats with a direct message to the Senate Majority Leader. Senator McConnell, lead or get out of the way. Call us back today to the nation's capital. Mitch McConnell, call us back to a special session to meet this national emergency. Can the least thing that Donald Trump do is insist that Mitch McConnell come back and vote what's already on their table. Demand a vote. Demand a vote. And advice for those who do decide to act. Follow Connecticut's lead when it comes to gun control. I'm standing here with activists who together over the years, we passed the post Sandy Hook reforms, the strongest gun laws in the nation. Connecticut leads the way. And in the House of Representatives, we have passed universal background checks. We are leading and we need Washington to follow. Scott Wilson, the head of Connecticut's largest gun owner rights organization, had this, among other things, to say today. Quote, given that there are already thousands of laws pertaining to firearms across our country, it is difficult to conceive of any law that would stop someone from attempting to commit the most vile act of mass murder. 2019 is on track to have an average of more than one mass shooting every day in this country. According to a gun violence research group, there have been 251 mass shootings in the U.S. so far this year. The group classifies mass shootings as any attack in which at least four people are shot, including the shooter. The tally includes five high-profile rampages where at least 100 people were shot. The violence is invading our way of life. The sad reality is that every family at every workplace has to start preparing for the worst. News 8's Kent Pierce has a three word state police want you to remember to survive an active shooter situation. This weekend's mass shootings serve as reminders that gun violence can happen anywhere, anytime. That's why Connecticut State Police want you to keep three words in mind at all times. Run, hide, fight. Run, hide, fight works whether you're at school, at work, in the grocery store, at a church, or at the movies. All of those are places we have seen a mass shooting in recent years. If you hear gunfire, like folks did in downtown Dayton, Ohio, do what they did and run. Leave your belongings and run away from the shooter. We want you guys to be safe. Uh, we want you guys to get out of as um, fast as possible, get out of the situation as fast as possible with less casualties. Police say if you can help others escape, great. If they won't join you in running, leave them and go and warn others to stay away. And as hard as it might be, do not stop to help the wounded. As soon as law enforcement gets in there and as soon as the scene is safe, then they'll start to bring in those individuals that are able to help the wounded. Hands up! Hands up! When you do encounter police, show them your hands so they know you're not a threat. If there is nowhere to run, 
You have to hide, try to get under something or behind a locked or barricaded door, turn off the lights, turn your phone to silent, not even vibrate, and try to use text or social media to let people know where you are. Then, if the shooter does find you, as a last resort, fight. Whether it's grabbing something that's in the room, a fire extinguisher, a chair, whatever it might be, stop their actions and then try and get it out of that situation as fast as possible. Try to do as much harm as possible because your life depends on it. I'm Kent Pierce, News 8. The pain and heartbreak from these shootings is being shared nationwide as the fight over America's gun culture reignites once again. Still ahead tonight on News 8 at 5, you'll hear more on how the gun debate is hitting a boiling point in Washington, what the FBI is doing about a rise in domestic terror attacks, and hear from a local psychologist about how to talk to your children in the wake of tragedy. And we're following this breaking news out of Hartford. The search is on for the driver behind a deadly hit and run on Hillside Avenue this afternoon. The 55-year-old woman who was killed has not yet been identified. No arrests have been made. Through some discovery in New Haven, a city housing worker stumbles on a body in the backyard of a home on Winthrop Avenue. No word yet on a cause of death. Police have not said if this case is suspicious. For the first time this year, mosquitoes in Connecticut have tested positive for eastern equine encephalitis. The mosquitoes were trapped in the Pachog State Forest in Voluntown on July the 31st. Triple E is rare but serious in humans. There are only about six human cases a year across the country. Outbreaks typically begin among horses. A Peter Pan bus driver behind bars accused of locking a passenger up with the luggage. Hear from a woman on board when she realized there was extra cargo below. We're going to pay more for parking in Hartford. We'll tell you how much it will cost you for a spot downtown and what is behind the hike. And this first Monday in August, just fantastic. We're starting the week great. We're going to end the week great, but in between, not so good. We'll talk about an eight-day forecast coming up. Tom Brady and Giselle may be getting a place in Connecticut. We'll tell you where they're house hunting straight ahead.